Hi, I'm Kurt Bossar from Denison Yachting, here to walk you through Sea Axis, a 125-foot tri-deck five-cabin motor yacht built by Heeson. What makes this Heeson completely different than any you'll find today is her owner's dedication to completely restoring her to her Dutch heritage. From 2009 to 2010, she was completely structurally restored by extension of decks, replating of her hull, and the strengthening of her scamplings. In 2015 and 2018, she benefited from a complete interior restoration, new fabrics, woods, flooring, you name it. And now, just over the last four months, finished in June 2020, she's had a complete recertification by the American Bureau of Shipping. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean and what makes this Heeson so special. Sea Axis was designed to cross oceans and take her owner all over the world and that's something she has done time and again. With this in mind, let's start on her hardtop. Equipped with long-range radars and satellite domes, this superyacht is always in the know. These tools are mounted on a hardtop that provides shade for the sun deck, which rests directly below. Starting forward on the sun deck, we come to the first of many open entertaining spaces on board. Comfortable seating and sunning options span the entire beam of the upper deck with a wrapping bench to port, a sump pad to starboard, and a centerline bench paired with a tabletop. Turning aft, we see the sun deck's main attraction, a huge centerline bar encircled by seating for 10. With a gorgeous blue stone bar top, this fully loaded wet bar has everything a bartender needs for extended charters. This includes plenty of counter space, a sink, ice maker, and plenty of refrigeration. Stepping out from underneath the hardtop, we arrive at another guest favorite, a centerline jacuzzi. The layout of this yacht is what makes Sea Axis so appealing for charter guests. There isn't a single guest space that's cluttered or underappointed, and there's no more obvious space where this is illustrated than the bridge deck aft. This wide open venue is a multi-purpose space that you don't often find on yachts under 150 feet. As you see it, the bridge deck aft is the perfect place for throwing ornately themed events. Aft is a massive seating area that encircles a fire pit, and this is where guests often find themselves in the evenings. When crossing oceans and chasing your next adventure, the teak deck underfoot transforms into a tender deck an inflatable tender and a pair of jet skis are all secured up here and deployed by a 4,400 pound davit on the port side. Looking forward of the davit, you see that the bridge deck has wide walkarounds that connect to a Portuguese bridge that we'll cover in just a few minutes. For now, let's continue forward into the sky lounge through a pair of automatic sliding doors. There are a few things about this bright sun lounge that jumps out at first, two of which are found by the entry doors. I love how wood flooring first greets you as well as a day head. Forward of the day head is a desk nestled in a nook. Sitting below a large window, this is a great space to get away and chase inspiration. There's also plenty of comfortable seating in here that faces a TV. You'll notice that everything found throughout the interior has been updated as part of her complete refit. Forward of the starboard sofa are stairs that connect with the main deck foyer, an area that we will revisit later in today's walkthrough. For now, let's step into the wheelhouse. Like any Dutch super yacht, the wheelhouse stacks up to any commercial helm. Before we have Captain Nick talk about the instruments and operation, I want to point out a few other features in here. First, there's a workstation right by the entrance that feels like a separate space. Forward of this is a settee and table for the crew. On the port side aft is the captain's quarters. Let's have the yacht's captain give us a breakdown of the helm. I'm Nick, captain of Motor Yacht Sea Axis. I'm going to show you some of the systems we have on board. Right here is our Simon system. This system displays most everything that we need to know going on on the ship. Shows you all our tank systems, what's going on with our engines, generators. It's basically a total monitoring system for the yacht. This is our CCTV. 
we were able to monitor all different sections of the vessel, port and starboard side, and the aft deck is nice as we can look back at the tender and tow. Uh, we also have a pan tilt zoom option for the engine room so we can scope in and out in different areas of the engine room so we can monitor things while we're underway without having to physically go in the engine room. Over here is our time zero or our noble tech. This is our basically full chart plotting navigation system that we have on board. And then all of these monitors actually can be switched out to any of the different systems at any time. So if I wanted to have radar on one and a uh, chart plotter over here, uh, that's an option as well. It just depends on how you want to have it set up. So C-Axis also offers AIS. So we have a nice AIS system on board where we can not only see other ships uh, out in the ocean, but they can also see us. We also have autopilot, and then the boat is equipped with NIAID stabilizers. Uh, so as we're underway, our stabilizer fins will keep us uh, balanced out. We have an additional depth sounder and additional GPSs here, and then our uh, VHF radios. Right here is both our port and starboard radar controls, compass, spotlights, bow thruster, throttle controls, and steering. Over here is our engine analog uh, data, as well as all the controls for our window wipers, lighting. The owner went through and completely ripped out all the AV and we put in brand new everything. Uh, we actually ran 4,000 feet of wire through the boat so that we have a full audio Crestron, uh, Kaleidoscape, and um, sound system that is just next to none. Flanking the wheelhouse are a pair of side access doors that lead out to the side decks. Up here, you have great visibility and communication with the crew on the bow is effortless. The foredeck onboard sea axis is straightforward but essential. This is where her ground tackle is stored, which is made up of a dual horizontal windlass that raises and lowers Navy anchors on half-inch chain. From here, let's jump from bow to stern and take a look at the swim platform. This area gets a ton of use whether getting in and out of the water or staging your water toys. Almost every water-based activity takes place here. A teak-appointed Euro transom leads down from both port and starboard to a deceptively large platform just above the waterline. Back here are cleats for tying off water toys and your tender, as well as shore power hookups on the starboard side. Forward and center line is a remarkably wide, watertight door that offers access into a large lazarette where the majority of the yacht's water toys, like these sea bobs and dive equipment, are stored. A few other items found in here are a commercial ice maker and a deep freezer. Passing through a watertight door on the port side, we step into the control room with a workstation for the yacht's engineer. Across from the workbench is a true fridge and freezer. Continuing forward brings us to a shore power converter, making it possible for sea access to get power on virtually any dock in the world. Next, let's step into the engine room. The thing that immediately jumps out is how much space there is in here. Servicing the machinery is easy due to her thoughtful mechanical layout with access to all major machinery on all sides. New in 2002, twin Deutz TBD 616 V16 diesels run this yacht and put out 1,527 horsepower each. Outboard of the engines are a pair of 65 kilowatt Northern Lights generators, which were both rewound in 2015. Her economical engines give C axis a cruise speed of 12 knots and a top speed of 17 knots. To give you an idea of her efficiency, at 12 knots she burns 70 gallons between both engines and the generators. When it comes to tank capacity, she can carry 7,000 gallons of fuel and 1,400 gallons of fresh water. Her NIAID stabilizer system was rebuilt in 2015 and the effects of her stabilized ride are felt immediately when activated. Not only can sea access cross oceans and hunt down hidden anchorages, but she does so comfortably, and few spaces on board are more comfortable than her aft deck. An oversized El Fresco dinette with seating for 10 around a hardwood table is at the center of all the action. And there's a second molded-in seating area just aft. Looking outboard to either side are boarding doors and deck gear for tying off when you're back at the dock. A matte white overhead covers this entire area. This overhead continues forward to a pair of automatic salon entry doors and a large storage locker that offers access down into the control room. 
From here, let's step inside and take a look at this yacht's stunning salon. As I've already mentioned, there is nothing about this yacht's interior left from the time when she was commissioned. All new soft goods and contemporary stylings make this Heeson interior stand out from any other yacht of her vintage. After the port side is a well-equipped wet bar that services the salon and aft deck. Behind the bar, we find plenty of storage for stemware right next to the wine cooler. Below the bar's stone countertop is a stainless sink, ice maker, and cold storage. Forward of the bar is the living area of the salon with three white leather sofas that form an illuminated conversation pit. Aft on the starboard side is a set of stairs that leads down into a fifth stateroom, which is going to be the kids' favorite. Removed from the other guest accommodations, it's set up with twin berths and a Pullman, as well as a private ensuite with shower. Leaving this stateroom and passing back into the forward half of the salon, we arrive at the formal dining table for 10. The table and seating rests on top of hardwood flooring that adds great contrast to this high traffic area. Storage is found on all sides of this space with charter service in mind. Continuing forward on the starboard side would bring us into the main deck foyer, but for now, we're going to head forward into the port side and take a look at the galley. The chef's galley is loaded with everything you'll need to serve world-class meals to you and your loved ones. Right by the entrance of the galley is a true floor-to-ceiling refrigerator that keeps your food fresh. Looking across from here, we see where the dishes are done between a pair of stainless sinks and a dishwasher. Other appliances in here are a five burner cooktop below an exhaust hood, a pair of ovens, and a microwave. Outboard on the port side is a crew access door that leads to the side decks. Now let's leave the galley and continue forward and down into the crew lounge where the crew can spend their downtime away from the demands of five star service. This shared space features a comfortable dinette with a TV that monitors the ship's CCTV system just above. Another TV is found inboard as part of the crew's kitchenette. Rounding out the lounge are a pair of Mealy washing machines and dryers. Three cabins with bunk layouts are connected to the crew lounge. Each cabin has its own ensuite with a shower stall. Leaving the crew area, let's pick up where we left off on the main deck and step into the foyer. Outboard are the stairs that lead up to the Sky Lounge as well as a side deck access door. Another set of stairs lead down to the lower guest accommodations, which we'll come back to in a few minutes. Forward of this staircase is the yacht's dayhead. This brings us to the master stateroom. As we enter the owner's guest accommodations and pass the ensuite as well as outboard storage, we arrive at where the owner lays their head. An aft facing king berth looks small in this beamy stateroom with a spacious and uncluttered layout. On either side of the berth are hanging lockers that slide open. On the port side of the master, we see a love seat positioned directly below a large hall window. A second window is found opposite with a desk and vanity area just below. Our last stop in the master is the ensuite, which is right next to the entrance of the master. In here, we see not only a shower stall and separate stall for the head and bidet, but a tub as well. Leaving the master, let's step below deck via a staircase in the foyer. At the foot of the stairs, we enter directly into the port side guest stateroom, where we are welcomed by an athwartship king berth. A red leather accent wall and warm woodwork add splashes of contrast to this space. As in all of these forward accommodations, there's a desk, TV, and plenty of storage. Note that there is an ensuite with the same stone finished shower we see in all the other guest rooms. Exiting this stateroom and heading aft brings us to a stateroom with twin berths, 
one of which is directly below a pair of hall windows that can be opened up. A Pullman berth can be seen when we turn our attention inboard. Leaving here and heading to our final stop on today's walkthrough brings us to the Ford VIP. Taking up nearly the full beam of the yacht, this stateroom rivals the Vaster on a lot of boats in her size range. On the port side is a nook with a desk below a pair of portholes, and the entrance into the ensuite can be found just aft. Over on the starboard side of the berth is a plush love seat as well as a walk-in closet. Thank you for joining me today aboard Sea Axis, the 125-foot Heeson Trideck motor yacht. If you have any questions or would like to schedule a visit, please don't hesitate to call me.